had just moved into my home in Benicia. It's about 20 years ago. And it was on a weekend for sure uh, that I was doing something around the house. I don't know, cleaning or sweeping out the garage, something like that. I was in the garage, opened the garage door up, and as the light came pouring in, also some wonderful music, piano music started to pour in. That old vintage music from the turn of the last century. And I thought, well, maybe somebody's got a CD on or a record or I listened a little bit more and sure enough, it was the real deal with somebody playing the piano. Not only playing, but singing as well. So I walked out my garage, down the driveway, across the street, up to the house where this great music was coming and into my introduction and friendship with Bruce Balala and his wife Sue and Bruce's passion to preserve and play this great music of the turn of the last century. Bruce can tell the story better than anyone. So come join me and we'll find out more about Bruce and his master index. I started out with being interested in ragtime. Uh, uh, I found some in San Francisco when we lived there and used and uh, it was very hard to get a hold of. I mean, uh, this is about 19, 55 or so I was playing the piano and, and playing just classical music and it was boring and I didn't like it and all that stuff. So anyway I was wandering around town in San Francisco. I found a woman that sold used music and she had a book uh, of rag of real rags, um, the Melrose original rag collection and um, I don't know it was two bucks or something. Took it home and I couldn't play anything. It was really hard. The maple leaf rag is really hard. That's really the most famous one. And uh, so it took quite a bit of learning to do it, but then I really had an incentive because I wanted to play it. Uh, but then after I got to play where I could play all the book, the book, there weren't any more, there wasn't any more music. So I, I stumbled around getting copies from the University of Tennessee and all this sort of stuff. And they had, in fact, in the original, before all this, copying got really sophisticated. They used to have negatives where the paper, where it's white, is black and the notes were white. And, oh man, that drives you crazy. Anyway, about 1972 or three, I think it was, the, the Sting came out. And when the Sting came out as background music, they had Scott Jop Joplin's rags. And when that happened, uh, everybody liked the rags and they wanted to get them. And, and uh, Melrose published Oh geez, I don't know. Dover, I mean, they were soft cover, a hundred rags for fifteen dollars, kind of thing. It was just a, a, a breakthrough, kind of, and you could get music. And then, as I got longer in life, I got interested in the twenties music, especially stuff, the novelty numbers and stuff. And it was worse than the rags; you couldn't find anything because sheet music has died uh, as a business. All the people are going out of business and, and, and I guess the internet is available but I haven't been able to find stuff on the internet. Uh, people tell me I could, could but I haven't yet. The popular music is on the beat, it's not syncopated and so people, it's easier to sing. It's hard to sing a ragtime song, it's just hard to sing. And, uh, but in about the 80s, well around 60s, 70s, Joe Finger's car and there was Crazy Auto and 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 uh, Tiny Little um, from and Lawrence Welk had a had a uh, piano player um, little girl uh, oh she's cute anyway she played she played ragtime on on early television and, and it, but it wasn't really ragtime I mean, the real rags sounded like rags and this other they they take the popular music and make it sort of sound raggy and that was what they considered a honky tonk style. It was on the Indian Reservation in Tuba City, and uh, uh, there weren't, it wasn't any TV, and there wasn't any radio where Tuba City was. So I got a piano and hauled it up there, and it's been around with me ever since. It turns out that this piano normally is like every other piano. It has a wood, a wood um, sounding board here that tilts forward, and you hold your music on it. But um, I don't like the piano. And the, I wanted the thing open anyway, so I had it open, then I brought the computer home and how am I going to fit it on there? It was kind of like that. 
and it just turns out, I don't know, Mappa must have designed it this way. If you start out with ragtime, it's, it's, it's very on the beat. Um, the left hand. The left hand's going like this. This is a C chord. So on a C chord, you got one, two, three, four, or they also count it in cut time, which is two. So one, two, one, two. So on the right hand, with ragtime, you're playing off the beat. You play what's syncopated. See, instead of playing a melody like You're going. I'm not sure I can say it much more than that, but that's what it is, is you're playing in between the beats of the left hand. A march isn't ragged time. A march is a march, right? It's, it's, uh... it's like that, regular. But if you play it in rag time, it starts becoming a rag. And so like, When you put it off the beat like that, then it becomes syncopated. And it's, although ordinary march doesn't come out very good, you can do better with the, the right kind of melody, and, it, and it's break time. Yeah. So, um, and cakewalks were that. They were kind of an in-between. They were bright. They weren't all syncopated, but they were just starting to. And then um, a guy like Scott Joplin, I don't know exactly where he came from. He came from out of left field, and he just, he just devastated the world with this, this maple leaf rag. It's hard looking at the sheet music unless I've heard of something before. You know, uh, one of the tunes was, there's a trick, trick, trick in ch picking a chick, chick, chicken today. I think I saw I'd heard that on a CD. I never saw the music. And then uh, I found it somewhere. So naturally, I knew what it was then, you know, and it was worth saving. Uh, some of them I, I, I just never even heard. Uh, and I don't know, like uh, there's one called Walter Donaldson was a big, big songwriter in the probably right after War Irving Berlin, who was the best one or the most popular. And Walter Donaldson wrote a lot of songs like um, Caroline in the Morning and... Uh, anyway, this other one he wrote was called Sing, Sing Me a Baby Song, which sounds kind of... I think it's a bad title myself, but it's a real sweet little tune. Mm -hmm. And I never heard of it. And uh, uh, then I just came across it one day, you know, I was I, I, I just playing, playing through my collection, you know, and I hit that, and it's a really nice tune. It should have been popular, and it, maybe it was, but I'd never heard of it, and most of the people had. Uh, anyway, I had a, a friend that I, I, I'm sharing. I wanted to have the book for her. And uh, so I met this banjo player over in, in Pat Campbell, over in the... Jazz things. I don't know. We were talking or something, and he'd done some publishing. And I said, "How do you get somebody to publish one of these things?" He said, oh, "It's not so tough. You just get out there and copy them all." So 500 pages. 500 pages. So I said, "You know, I can't copy them on both sides." Oh yeah, I know how to do all that. So anyway, we got together and we published six or I guess I got six books and he got six books, and it took two or three weekends and then five hundred dollars of paper and all that. Anyway, we got it and. We, just been wonderful. Just been wonderful. Anyway, um, then I got to thinking, well, Jesus, you know, I'm now I'm 70, and and look how tough it was for me to get it. Just imagine you now if I was a kid who wanted to hear this stuff, you know, uh, where the hell would I go? You know, I, I see now the internet's full of this stuff, but I have a lot of trouble finding the sheet music on the internet. Now, what happened is he started collecting it and you know I, I had a bookcase full of it and then there was some more in the garage and 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 then there was the stuff you were currently playing and of course I'm a mess anyway so it, it just piles everywhere you know and, and I'm married and all that stuff and she she was real tolerant of that stuff but I couldn't find it either you know I mean I want to play I, I know I got the music to that you know and I spent half an hour looking for it and tried to find it and only three of the four cut pages and all that kind of stuff 
And then you, you go over there, and, you, and then, gee, that reminds me of some other tune, right? Oh, yeah, I'll, I have that one somewhere, you know? And, and then to look all over. By the time you get back to the piano, you, you've lost your enthusiasm, you know? I thought, that's not gonna work. I mean, look at, here's just a, you got four or five books right here on the table. To find anything and play it and, and not lose your mood by the time you, you go there and search through all this other stuff, you're gonna come over here and get the piano, you get to find it, get to play it, you know? It's even worse if you got people who want to sing it, right? One of the guys in, in what's called the, what they call Jelly Roll Jazz Band, had a was a, playing a tuba, and he had he had um, a small laptop that he used to get the tunes for for Jelly Roll for the jazz band, and uh, uh, I had thought of it before, but I'm not good at the computer. I I I had a this other one, which is probably you know, 10, 15 years old, and I started on that. I made up a, a list, uh, but it was e much easier to make a list than it is to copy the actual stuff. So I thought, gee, I'll get more organized, and I'll get a computer to do it, and it will list all these things, and then I'll be able to sort them out in order and find the stuff. God, it was awful. I just had a terrible time. I couldn't remember how to how to back things up in the old computers. They had uh, they do slash, back slashes and stuff, and I, I'm really poor at remembering how to do any of that, so it wasn't very successful. Um, I tried it again with the next computer I got, and, and it was slightly better, although it was so much trouble to, to change it from um, uh, going from sorting on the number to sorting on the filter and, and that kind of stuff. And then of course it requires, the other thing it requires is, is a very uh, uh, strict um, <laughs> putting away. You gotta put it exactly in the right place. You can't put the 200 number field in the 300 number box and have the computer tell you where it is. So what happened there was that there's a finite problem of having somebody put it in the right hole and, and, and be able to be the one that you're addressing and all that. So it was only semi-successful, but I could see that it was a real powerful way of doing it because I could look at my, I have about 300 filters and I could look at this thing and tell, you know, I had six left or two left or whatever it was and that was a big help. Um, then it occurred to me, well, gee whiz, maybe I can do that with the music. Uh, nobody I knew had done that yet so I, because I thought maybe I could ask him how to do it, and uh, I didn't have anybody to ask. Uh, and so I, I wanted to start, and, and I think the thing that started me off was the scan snap thing. Um, thing. And then when I found out that this was around, uh, the scan snap thing, um, for $400, it goes as fast as you can do it, you know, and uh, that that sort of was a possibility then. It wasn't really a possibility before then because it just took too long. Um, 4,000 tunes, about three pages a tune is 12,000 pages. And 12,000 pages have to go through your scanner in order to get them in the thing. And, and uh, if you could, this one here was scanning two pages a minute. Well, Jesus, you know, it's just too long. So it, it kind of formed up that, that what we, uh, that it was now easier to scan it. It was also easier to to uh, um, to catalog it because you helped me with that. I I you know, I'm just not good at that. So uh, you helped me with a way of of putting them in a line, mm -hmm. and it wasn't that easy either. It took a little bit of massaging and stuff. Mm -hmm. So uh, it just kind of came together with you and the. Apple and that, and it is possible. And now I want to keep going so I can finish it. I, I'm never going to finish it. I mean, until I can get most of the stuff on there. Because, uh, as you can see, this is kind of more my, my raw collection, and the, the stuff's all different sizes. Um, originally, when they early stuff, 1890s, the the paper was more like 12 by 14, and now. Of course, eight and a half by 11s become standard. So what happens is, in order to get it to go through the scan snap, which only takes eight and a half by 11, uh, you got to copy it with a copier and cut off what you cut off and all that stuff, and then and then put it through. So that's kind of an extra step that adds another. Well, see, because out of these 4,200 tunes, 
each one's three or four pages long. This is an A tune. It's not really even one of the ones I'd want to say, probably. However, you never know. You get older and it changes what you like. Um, so this is hard because it's got three different widths and uh, it'll come out. Sometimes they'll come out straight. But you have to kind of look at the original list to make sure now that it doesn't have a duplicate. Uh, blues for yesterday. So okay, I have no, I have no duplicate here. Uh, so then you scan, you, you've taken the scan snap, it's read into some sort of register or something, and, and then here you go. Now you're naming the tune. So you can really call it anything, but if you call it anything other than the title, you're going to have a hard time remembering what you did. Um, so now that the title looks okay, and I haven't spelled it wrong or anything, then you go over here. Okay, now that looks like a good title. Then you go over here with your three pages. You want to make sure that the pages aren't upside down or something. It makes it a lot more complicated when you're trying to play it. Then, now that the pages are all there and, and, and it looks right, they're kind of checking over to see that, that the words are the same and that if you've got two lines over here, it comes over here, two word, lines worth of words. Then when that all looks good, then you save it and it goes, as you can see, it jazzes it over here and Blues for Yesterday then shows up right there. And Blues for Yesterday right there is that that I've just taken down. So now you can put it over on a piano and play it because there it is, see? And there's one, two, and then the third page is there. So, so instead of having to go down there and, and pour through all the books, come back up and then try and find it in the book, and all that stuff, it's right there. It, it's terrific, that part, uh, once it gets in there, but it, it's a little bother doing it. If you want to hear Happy Days and Lonely Nights, you just push that twice, and there, there's the music. The music just shows up. And of course, it's, but, but it, it has its own problems, as you can see. This is sort of a kind of a bad copy of that. And, and uh, you can read it. Uh, it turns out that Apple computers, you can read it a lot better with than on Lovavo computers or whatever. <laughs> so I wanted to put it together. So some, besides which, I got a, a collection of you know, 20 feet of it, and I can never find anything. With this thing, it's wonderful. Geez, you go down the list, you know, you know the name of the tune, you go down the list, and there it is. As everybody's gotten older, uh, you know, we're, friends of ours have died and that sort of thing. And, and they have, everybody's got a collection, or some of the musicians have a more, a longer, more extensive collection. Um, and so, um, you know, it's to the point now, well, what's going to happen to it, and that kind of thing. And so I've been able to persuade a couple of people to, to trade collections with me, and so that's added to the pile. And I'm just hoping that we can kind of get some sort of a, of a, you know, master list kind of thing that, that people could play out of. So far, I've put 15,000 sheets on the computer. That's copy it to eight and a half by 11, run it through the scan snapper and alphabetize it and then kind of weed out the, the duplicates. Um, I'd say there's probably twice that left. I'm not sure. And, and now, as I'm getting together, I'm hoping that I can trade a guy who has a collection that I don't have, some things I don't have that he'll trade for me for what I've got, like that. An earlier guy, his name was Charles Anderson in San Diego. He uh, had been a musician in the 20s. He died about maybe 10 years ago. And he was a musician through the 20s, early, uh, late 20s. And he started what they call a musician call a fake book, which is a single note lead with a with the chords for the piano and banjo and all. So uh, he had trouble remembering the tunes, so he wrote them down, you know, and he collected it. And he had about 9,000 tunes uh, in this fake book. And uh, he'd collected it all his life, and then he died, and uh, he left it to some banjo guy to take care of Jim Jones. And uh, they've been selling it, but it hasn't gotten any larger because they've just kind of kept it, you know, maintained it. Um, I kind of like to try to do what he's doing, 
but for me it was more important to have the verse and the chorus what what what's normally known people normally know to sing is the chorus or or they remember the chorus but no seldom do people play the verse and the verse is really an story that the chorus is uh, talking about and so it doesn't make any much sense you know uh, like H.C. Sweet for instance uh, it just comes out of there they, it, this is an example H.C. Sweet but it turns out there's a little story about it that the, the guy sees his girlfriend walking down this person coming down the street and he's talking to another friend and all this sort of stuff that all comes out in the verse and, and maybe have a, a, a pretty good story to it uh, I mean for music yeah. that kind of story and so uh, the verse was important and, and uh, Charles Anderson had just recorded mostly the cor uh, uh, saved most of the choruses because they were easier and that was what people requested I've been saving the whole tune it's a little harder to find and it takes a lot more paper but it it's it's complete then I mean I did it over 30 or oh, geez, I don't know, it's longer than that 50 years yeah and so uh, you know, you kind of been putting it aside saying, well, yeah, I'll get to it someday. Well, now I can finally get to it. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I can finish it, but... Then these up here are rags uh, from a friend I have who's now in, he used to be in Virginia City, but now he's in uh, South Carolina, an engineer, and he'd been collecting for a long time, and we talked about it and traded stuff. And so anyway, there's, he made got these rags here, and then this stuff here which is all his and that's 4,000 tunes and that's closer to having both verse and chorus so I'm, I'm copying that now and then I've got to give him a copy of that so he because he's a computer guy and he'll be able to appreciate it so here's my here's the index goes from uh, no Tin Whistle Blues, because it's got a, a, a apostrophe, I guess. It goes all the way down to um, Zonky or something. Zorba, the Greek theme. And um, it's alphabetical. And every time you add something, it puts it in the right place. The computer was able to make the master list. list. Now it's portable and it's on a DVD or a CD. I don't know what whatever one it was and and uh, the next idea was that uh, no, I'm not getting the philosophy but but people but, uh, you get a different feeling when you're entertained or as, as opposed to when you're participating in the entertainment and in, in, in the in the in the pastime whatever it is uh, it, it's much better if you're uh, you're part of a group singing, I think, than it is if you're listening to somebody else sing. Uh, that been my fly. I don't know whether that's. It's obviously not popular, so <laughs> nobody does that. But so what? I, I, there have been a few people that like to sing, and I'll go to that. We go to their houses or something, and, and and it's nice to be able to sing some of these songs. But they're old and. They don't sing them very often, and so the problem is they don't know the words.
Sharon Swenson. And I think the thing that brings me to this music was the fact that my family played, my great-grandparents played for dances, my grandfather played for dances, and my mother saw that I could sing little songs back to her. So she started me taking piano lessons when I was four. And as I was, by the time I was in the fourth or fifth grade, my grandfather and I were playing in the living room. I played piano, he, he played the violin. And um, I just always loved music. I took classical music all the way through college, but always practiced the old standards. And so um, I went to Southern California to teach school, and a month after I started teaching, I got a job. Just fell into it, luckily, playing piano six nights a week in a bar. And so I've been playing ever since. <laughs>
My parents had this roll piano that had been my mother's a piano that she learned piano lessons on. And um, my dad was so great, he taught me at a very early age how to thread the roll and pedal and then de-thread it and rewind it. And I was so little, I, I held on to a, you know, the, the top of the music desk you know, and pumped. So from that, I learned a lot of songs. It's, it's bright, it's, it's, you know, it's uplifting, it's fun to play, it makes people smile. No matter, I mean, if you start playing some of this stuff, uh, even if it's not their kind of music, it's, um, it's infectious. In Europe, it was a huge success, but in this country, it was, you know, only played in the, the, that, the ragtime style, and much of the two step kinds of things were only played in the Tenderloin district or the, in the brothels.
I was hugging and a chalking and a talking and a hugging away. Well, I met another fellow with some chalk in his hand coming around the other way. <laughs> I, I don't know. That's the kind of thing I don't hear people writing anymore. Uh, see, now that's where the computer one comes in good because you can just press the button and change it. And you don't have all these things around here, see? It, it, unless you remember it, you know? Don't you love me, let me rock you in my cradle of love And we cuddle all the time Oh, I wanna love the baby and the might as well be you Pretty baby of a Pretty baby of a man Oh, I know one Since it, it was a combination of all the indexes I had Seemed like obviously we were at the master index. Uh, I didn't realize it was going to be kind of a life's work.